We're here in D.C. For all of us, it's our first year running the Boston Marathon. Just the fact that we get to take this break, reconnect, and talk about how training has been going and, you know, what we can do to better our training. I'm excited to be here. My friendship with Yusuf, we liked to travel together, even if we had to get one room and, and share a bed. It was me moving to New York, me moving to D.C. He would come see me and make sure that I was good and come experience it for the first time as well. This weekend is exciting. All of us have been training in our own separate bubbles. Uh, myself up in New York where it's been freezing and pretty miserable uh, on some of these long runs. DC is very important to all of us for different reasons. A lot of us are born and raised on the East Coast, up and down 95 between New York and North Carolina, and DC was always the halfway point. A lot of us would come here for Howard's homecoming. Schaefer went to grad school here in DC. We would come to DC and hang out because everybody knows us, everybody treats us with love, and we know we can come to DC and, and have a good time and, and fellowship and create new memories. Um, we have a lot of memories in the city. <laughs> yeah, how you mentally prepare for Boston? Me personally, I'm just, I'm just saying myself at the finish line. Like everything else is a blur. It's just the finish line, getting that medal and taking my oldest use of photo. So mentally, I'm like, hey, I gotta finish because I gotta get this photo for the gram. So I, I gotta do what I gotta do. It's been 10 years since Yusuf has been gone. And every time I do run, I'm, I'm thinking Absolutely. about Yusuf. The thing that I always encourage my clients to be very careful of is mistaken things that are therapeutic with therapy. Because exercise is very important to mental health, but there's more to it than that. I see so many brothers say, hey, the gym is my therapist. These weights are my therapist. No, they are not. They are therapeutic. I ain't never met a barbell that's gonna help you walk down the wounds from your parents not giving you the kind of love you need. I, I've never seen a treadmill that helps you dispel your cognitive distortions. We must not mistake the gym for a therapist. It is therapeutic. It makes us feel good. It doesn't always progress us in terms of our mental health and deconstructing some of the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors we have that are not helpful for us. Start contrast with that. Before use of passing, um, the way I handled my mental health was I didn't. I thought that, you know, being born in the 80s, being raised in the 90s, I had to be a tough guy. I, I couldn't be vulnerable. I couldn't tell people how I felt. So I just kept everything bottled up. I think Yusuf passing was one of like the first times I had a friend that, you know, it wasn't gun violence or it wasn't like a tragic accident. His passing was the first time I've dealt with a different type of tragedy where it was something that was hard to explain. And then, you know, it was the first time I had different emotions with a passing that wasn't just sadness. There was anger, there was frustration, there was confusion. Then there was the sadness and then all that. So like dealing with the mixed emotions in this particular situation, differing from, from other circumstances was, was unique. I realized the importance of mental health especially as a black man, we're all raised to not cry, right? We're all raised to bottle up our emotions and to not let people know how we're feeling. I think losing Yusuf in particular for everybody in our friend group was a, a turning point in how we approach mental health and how we approach communication with each other. It's still a work in progress. There's still plenty of things that I will, will learn about myself you know, as I uncover things that I once didn't know. Oh my goodness, black men in older and younger generations have two completely different ideologies of mental health. They grew up in two completely different times. I think men are being asked to do something different. Men are being asked to be something different and it's unprecedented. For men of my generation, it's different because I'll slide through the bar, talk to the homies, like, man, let me tell you what my therapist said. There are a lot of us that look at a therapist less like some condescending know-it-all that's here to change us in all the ways we don't want. And we look at it more like an advisor. You know, you're part of my group, like my barber. So it's just a really large shift in ideology. In 2017, I had a best friend pass away from a brain aneurysm. And then in 2018, I had a friend 
he passed away from a diabetic coma. Having a therapist definitely has helped me a lot still to this day. Therapy. I'm not afraid of therapy. I have a therapist. I, we have a couples therapist and I have a regular therapist. So uh, I'm not afraid to to speak to someone when I'm down. Some of the tools that I suggest black men have in their mental health toolkit are simple things, low key things like stealing time to frolic in nature, having guilt free rest, allowing yourself to feel complex emotions at the same time and understanding it. You can feel very grateful for this job that you have, but still be very critical of your horrible boss. Another big one is feeling big emotions and allowing them to happen to you. If you do not cry, if you do not let that pressure out, you explode in odd ways, in odd situations, and on people that you probably don't intend to. My youngest son, you know, has Yusuf middle name. What I teach him is, you know, just in life, you have to know sometimes you can do everything right and things could still go wrong. They could still go left. And you just gotta be prepared. As a father, when it comes to my daughters, uh, mental health is very important, man. I try to instill things into to them about being vocal and saying how they feel. It's not easy being a parent, man, because you have somebody who's watching you, somebody who's looking up to you, somebody who needs you to feed them. And you also have the world that's probably, you know, coming down on your shoulders as well, too. But you, you have to, you know, find your outlets. You have to find your peace. You have to find your me time. And, you know, I, I think all of that is super important. If I could give advice to younger black men or people like me, people that look like me, it's community and, and communication. I'm not a professional psychiatrist. I, I don't pretend to be. I don't think any of us are. I know talking helps. It's all about the conversation. A lot of the times when you're in a funk or you're feeling a certain type of way, just talking about it makes you feel better you know, and, and knowing that somebody understands and, and relates. I started being more vocal with friends about my presence and my support for them and, and that there was a person here that if, you know, they needed to tap into someone, that I was there to do that. It's the mental. It's the mental of it all. We're able to do a lot with our bodies. We just don't realize that our mind usually stops us at a certain point when it gets too tough or, you know, you start to feel something that you've never felt before physically. I um, mean, your mind tells you like, hey, this is different. You should probably slow it down or pull it back and things like that. But mostly it's just about kind of tackling what you have going on here so you can move forward physically. While I'm running, the most mentally challenging part is to keep going. There's a lot of times where you'll start running and you think that you're at like mile three or four and you're only at mile one. So you got to mentally push yourself. Till this day, I, I just see Yusuf running beside me. And I'm like, you know, I really never had that opportunity to run with him. So that just keeps me going. It, it keeps me fueled. It, it keeps me focused. If he was here, he would look me in the face and say, you know, Fresh, shut up and run. And that that is my mentality and that, that keeps me going. For me, honestly, it's the training. Uh, running the race itself, to me, isn't hard. Uh, when you're there with your brothers, you have a lot of support there. And even when you kind of lose your brothers in a race, there's a lot of other people that's running to the right of you, the left of you. Uh, there's just a lot of encouragement, you know, all around. When I look at things in my life, I don't have anything from 20 years ago, right? I don't have the same house, I don't have the same car, I don't have the same anything from 20 years ago, except for these bonds and except for these friendships, and except for these connections, and the fact that so many of us are still close and so many group chats are still going 20 years later, it's a really beautiful thing. I'm thinking for you guys, you know, whatever goals, decisions that we make in life, we always support each other, and to make it full circle, it's like now, not only we're continuing to push each other, now we're also motivating each other mm -hmm. to continue to keep running, focusing on our mental health, making sure we're st strong, checking on our kids, checking on our significant others. And this is dope, man. I'm thankful for you guys being in my life, man. I'm glad I transferred to ANT. All right, brothers. Always love. Positive energy. 26.2. Here we come. Boston. Cheers. Yo, here you go. Those miles are coming. Those miles are coming. <laughs> Those miles are coming. <laughs>